Hello, my name is Madeline Deep, and I will be one of your lecturers for the YNPM 612 Requirement Engineering course. In this course, we are going to dive deep into both the theory and practice of how requirements are engineered. It is an important skill in the world of software and systems development. Let us pause to consider why good requirements are so critical in software and system development. Think of requirements as the blueprint for your software project. Just like a blueprint guides the construction of a building, well-defined requirements steer the development of software. Without them, teams can lose direction, leading to products that do not meet user needs, contain defects, or even fail to see the light of the day. Good requirements provide clarity, ensuring that everyone from developers to stakeholders is on the same page and working toward a common goal. Understanding requirements is not just about knowing what needs to be built. It is also about understanding the methods and tools that can be used to gather, document, and manage these requirements effectively. Working with stakeholders to understand their needs is often more complex than it seems. Stakeholders can range from end users and customers to business managers and technical staff. Each group has its own perspective, needs, and way of communicating. As a requirements engineer, your role is to be a bridge between these diverse groups, translating needs, concerns, and ideas into a coherent set of requirements. Let us talk about what we're going to cover. This course is all about understanding the nuts and bolts of requirements, what they are, why they matter, and how they evolve over time. We will explore different types of requirements, like functional and non-functional, and understand the roles of facts and constraints in shaping them. We'll also delve into the risks and impacts that comes along with the requirements process. We will also explore various tools and methodologies, from traditional ones to the latest in the field. You'll learn not just how to use these tools, but also when and why to use them. This knowledge will empower you to choose the best approach for each unique project. Our class will be a blend of traditional lectures and interactive workshops. We are big believers in learning by doing, so expect to be actively involved in this requirement development process through these workshops. We'll get hands-on with techniques for eliciting, analyzing, evaluating, and managing requirements. You'll learn how to effectively write and review them, ensuring that they are clear, concise, and achievable. Mastering the art and science of good requirements is key to successful software development. This course will equip you with the skills and knowledge to excel in this crucial aspect of software engineering. Thank you. My name is Michael Lindvall, and I'm teaching ENPM 612 together with Madeleine. Madeleine gave an excellent overview of the course. Let me talk about some of the methods we look at in this course. First, we, we look at both traditional agile methods, both frequently used in practice. Traditional methods are typically used for larger, more safety critical projects. And the main idea is to define all requirements up front and create product plans and software architectures, et cetera, based on those requirements. These re methods are structured and liked by product managers because it's at all times clear where we are in the process. We look at methods to create such requirements, analyze and test them. You can expect these methods to be used at your future workplace. Agile methods are typically used for smaller, quicker projects, and instead of requirements, talk about user stories that are iteratively executed in sprints. They don't define all requirements upfront because according to the proponents of these methods, they can't be defined upfront and even if they could, they'll change anyways. And we can't afford to develop the wrong software system, so why even try to define all requirements up front in the first place? So instead, we iterate, define and implement a selected set of user stories, get feedback from the end users, and iterate again until we have a complete system. These me methods are liked by developers, but less liked by product managers because it's not clear where we are in the process. 
We also looked at more researching methods and look at what it means to define a complete set of requirements. If you've ever tried to define a complete set of requirements, you'll quickly realize that it's difficult. Not only because there seems to be an endless number of requirements, but also because it's difficult to tell when to stop and if a new requirement is necessary or is or if it's already covered by an, an existing one. For most systems, it's not necessary to define every requirement, but for safety critical systems, it is. So we look at methods where the outcome is complete set of non overlap requirements. Since these methods are more formal, the requirements can also be used to generate code, test cases, and other artifacts. These methods are not so common in the workplace, but once you understand them, you can help software products succeed because you know how to add structured thinking to the requirements engineering process. But more about that when we see you in class.